Hi, this is MXUX. I just wanted to bang out this video site because I saw this cool, cool uh, video. Lordstown Motors, it's alive. This is from Total Controls in uh, Tennessee. And they've installed a digital uh, robotic inspection tool here uh, on a robot to um, inspect the dashboards. I just want to get this. There we go. Check this out. Wait, let's go back to the beginning here. All right. Check this out. That's the Lord's Time plan. That's a dashboard for an endurance coming in. And this robot with this cool background music. This is a 2D robot. It's taking digital pictures and it's inspecting this assembly for quality control. Check it out. Look how cool that is. And those come in overhead on that overhead conveyor. They go down and this is all the output uh, that's generated by that camera. And this computer software checks everything. I think it's so cool. Anyway, this is uh, state-of-the-art stuff. Uh, you know, Everybody thinks, uh, you know, we're standing out in the middle of some cornfield in Ohio there. Yeah. Who else is using this? I bet I bet Ford isn't even using this. I think Nissan is using it. Uh, this is a new system. Anyway, I think it's just super, super cool. I mean, just the music, just this video. These guys should get an award for this. And I imagine they're going to use this technology on all their subcomponents, maybe their main components. And you talk about quality control, there's the line, there it is coming through, the next unit's going to come up. Fantastic. Then human hands. There we go, give these guys a, a shout if you need this system. Hi, this is just a short article, a, a recent article from 2021, July, real recent. Laffy's announced on the uh, in-wheel hub motor, and I've got a couple other things I'm going to show on this too. I'm just gonna, this is real quick. Uh, this is the highest performance direct drive gearless in-wheel in, in powertrain. This is what they're using on the Endurance. Notable feature: extremely high torque, low weight, unique compact packaging. Uh, 15 million newton, uh, 1500 newton meters of torque. Don't know what that is. Uh, 147 miles per hour. Okay, I said they had the endurance up to 130 miles an hour on a track. Uh, optimized, uh, blah, blah, blah. Uh, design, electric hybrid, uh, rapidly and cost effectively without compliments. Anyway, uh, prototype mules based on, uh, now Q, this was uh, something that Q's Views was asking about. They put these motors on a BMW X6 and they did a 3.5 second zero to 100 kilometers which is uh, uh, 65 miles an hour so zero to 60. Uh, I think a BMW X6 SUV is comparable in wheat in weight wheat weight to a uh, 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 the endurance uh, tier one supplier blah 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 anyway just wanted to point that out let's go on to the next section here and just reviewing the uh, Lordstown Motors Tech, this is just another uh, little piece here on, little longer piece in e-mobility engineering. I believe I've mentioned this in some of my other videos, the L1500 wheel motor, which is what uh, Lordstown is using. Okay, we'll use cookies. All right. Uh, so this has been ongoing, this development of this product since 2006. A radio flux three phase AC synchronous motor weighing 33 kilograms, which is 65 pounds, something like that. 67 pounds. 2019, uh, based on an earlier model. Uh, <laughs> the active part of the motor, uh, the electric machine with winding, takes up just 30% of the overall weight giving it a torque density of 460 newtons. The nearest competitor is 390, so it's 
very efficient. Again, I was talking earlier about the lightweight of the endurance and how it makes a difference. And it's, this goes all the way down into the motors as well. The endurance weighs 4,000 pounds and these motors are the most effective of their type. Anyway, probably of a lot of types. Uh, it has 83 components, the motor, 60% of which are standard supplier parts. And the rest mostly castings or a customized supplied, uh, customized supplier solution. So, uh, Lordstown should have no trouble getting this up and running. Okay. Uh, direct drive out running, meaning the external rotor and an internal stator. So the, the outside rotates, the internal part is, is uh, stiff. Uh, the stator ring is made from magnetic steel laminations. Its poles use a patented winding method developed in-house. Uh, it attaches directly to the vehicle knuckles. So again, another uh, IP. Um, logistics have been strongly prioritized. As a result, the wheel integrations using motor will also incorporate standard off-the-shelf automotive bearings and braking systems. So again, uh, Lordstown will have no trouble integrating this into their uh, vehicle. Standard brakes, bearings, so forth can you be used. As a result, each customer's motor, okay, so uh, anyway, they're just saying here that, uh, you know, this is, this is a really elegant design, which uses a lot of conventional parts, which are already tested and proven. As a result, each customer's motor can be customized to a degree to modify the rotor and stator interfaces to accommodate their preferences in peripheral components such as brakes, bearings, and other internal parts. So, again, they can change sizes to accommodate whatever brakes they think uh, the uh, endurance is going to need. And I think this is something they may have mentioned, uh, but again, it's not a big deal. Uh, this is a big deal. Within five minutes, you know, and this is the electric motor. This is like taking a V8 out of a truck, only you can do it on the endurance in five minutes. Can be integrated or removed from a car for routine maintenance, such as brake inspections and replacements. And what they don't say here is you can use common hand tools to do this. You do not need specialized tools. You need a torque wrench, probably. Uh, customizing wheel motors, performance and commo uh, uh, for bearings and brakes. The L1500 performance and components can also be tailored to meet manufacturers' uh, specific requirements. Again, that, you know, Lordstown has a secret sauce. They're gonna they're gonna uh, uh, build this motor the way they want it. They're building it on site. Uh, Here's permanent magnet, blah, 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 liquid cooled, operating range, 200 to 800 volts. So it can do 800 volts. It can do the, the big voltage. Uh, so at least this means little, very little to me anyway. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Here's, here, you know, Elon's first principles. Well, these guys, uh, they do what's called, uh, what do they call it? What do they call their approach? I don't know. Anyway, they take all aspects in, in, into effect simultaneous. It's what we call our multi-physics approach. So electromechanical, uh, thermal, mechanical, and control. Everything is addressed in, simultaneously at the same time during development and testing. So uh, they have a unified approach. So Elon Musk has first principles. They have multi-physics. Anyway, these guys are really smart. They're astrophysicists. I have other uh, videos on this that go into great depth on these motors. In general, testing strategy is based on three factors. Uh, okay. Testing based on OEM and international standards. So these have all been tested out to original equipment manufacturers and international automotive standards. Uh, then legislation, you know, whatever, I guess they're saying individual leg legislation from countries or regions. And lastly, their own testing system. So these, these have been tested out and for integration to OEM manufacturers. I'm not going to go through all this. This is all about the testing here. A lot of, a lot of, of um, 
this is devoted to bearing selection. Again, these are standard bearings um, that are integrated. Here's a picture of the aluminum uh, rotor, which drives the truck. Um, final assembly, blah, blah, blah. Most of the world high power electric are high speed and medium or low torque system. So uh, measurement equipment worldwide. So anyway, the point is they got high speed, high torque. Other ones have medium or low torque. Okay, so pick your, I don't know, what's Rivian, low torque? See it climbing up that hill? And then what's uh, Tesla, medium? They got a bunch of different tests. Uh, measuring stations have been delved internally. Uh, so they've done their own testing. The high torque requirements. So these are high torque. They keep mentioning high torque, high torque, high torque. You know, so this is what you want in performance. You lightweight, high torque. You're a race guy. You're a car guy. I don't know that much about cars, but I know that's important. Anyway. Uh, it avoids resonant frequencies, blah, blah, blah. The rotor is an outrunner configuration with the rotor directly driving the wheel as it rotates. Okay, you understand that? That's, that's the rotor. It's driving the wheel. It's an outrunner, okay? Uh, in our publicly known solutions, so they've got private solutions, obviously, uh, we construct a rotor with surface mounted permanent magnets. Uh, there's 40 magnets on the L1500. Uh, Neodymium, which is one of the strongest uh, magnets there is, I do believe. You guys can look that up, you eggheads. And uh, high torque density. Uh, so, there you go. These things are strong. These are the kind of things that'll, you know snap your finger off if you get in between them. The L100 stator poles use a form of winding patented by a Laffey. So this is all, in other words, you're not going to get a lot of competitors with Lordstown. Lordstown has the rights, the North American rights to this. I don't believe anybody else is going to develop this. I mean, they've been working on this for 12 years. I don't think we got anything to worry about. Everybody's basing their configurations on that yesteryear, you know, like they're building a, uh, uh, you know, a mixer for a cake, making cakes. You know, they get the motor in it with the, with the speed knob on it. Anyway, uh, if you use uninterrupted continuous wire instead of so many separate pieces, you don't need much insulation. It's much more cost effective. Uh, our method made you know, is only 24 welds. So anyway, they're using a totally different method than anybody else. Um, it's kind of like one wire row uh, wound around the stator, okay? Uh, torque, energy efficiency, cooling, uh, hairpin stators, uh, thick uh, bands, uh, the conductor bands have around, blah, 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 blah. So um, what's his name? Um, uh, Sandy Monroe said this was a preferential wine uh, using these thick... Um, Thick pins rather than other ones. We have patented this approach, and then since then, some may have adoptical have adopted uh, helical. So, so anyway, they 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 have uh, they have automated winding machinery, blah blah blah, testing procedures. So so they're they're being copied, but they still have an advantage. Uh, and here's a good. This is the state. This is the thing that has the pins in it that needs the cooling. And this is a stator with the brake, disc brake involved, installed. Okay? That's one part of the motor. The motor has two parts. This is one part. And there's the brake. Uh, liquid cooling it uses uh, antifreeze of water. Um, anyway. They got their own uh, inverters that they've developed. They use external inverters. They, they go through this in talking about how they wanted to make it not lock in the um, manufacturer to one inverter uh, so that they can use newer technology or different technology or however they want to do it. 
So again, total flexibility with uh, Lordstown for parting and uh, availability of parts and so forth. And this is a picture of the assembled motor, and these are the electrical connections. I think this is a cooling connection. I don't know if that's it. There's two in there. Anyway, um, motor control software, uh, again, is developed with a modular, modular architecture, blah, 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 to be enable compatibility with varying inverter hardware. It expects further and future advances in inverters, they will higher switching speeds and therefore further improvements in motor controls. So everybody's been talking about, well, they don't have the, the, uh, the torque control down and everything. So, you know, obviously they're settling in on their components, their inverters and uh, their other, other parts they're gonna be using to put this system together. And the software here is set up uh, to adapt to that. So they got to, you know, throw a few software switches and uh, do a little testing to get that all worked out. But as you can see, it's a complete system, inverter, software control, motors. Uh, and I'm going to go over in a second here that they, they also have the manufacturing machinery. They, they mentioned their um, stator winding machines and so forth. So anyway, uh, this is just a just kind of an update on the hub motor. I think everybody's forgetting how really cool and groundbreaking this is and how much Elon Musk is probably jealous of this in my opinion um, anyway Sandy Monroe is involved with Aptera he's invested a lot of money in Aptera Aptera using the same motors and that's the three-wheeled aerodynamic uh, self-charging uh, EV and, you know, I'm just going to put a bug in everybody's ear. You know, hey, Aptera, a lot of space in this plant. They're going to have the only North American manufacturing facility for these motors. I think we got to start building the Aptera at this plant as well. All right. I think that's a possibility in my estimation. Look for that in future videos. I've done a lot of uh, videos on the Aptera it's a good fit okay i noticed some of the other uh, youtubers q's views was asking for an update on the manufacturing of the uh, motor line uh, at lordstown the installation they got the machines coming in from malaysia the lines been tested this is uh i believe this is for iso 9000 uh certification and uh, oh, it's an R&D project. Well, forgive me, whatever. Uh, this is something that was produced. This is a bit old, it's 2018. Uh, but just to give you, this is the assembly line for the L1500. Uh, this is obviously, what, uh, three or four years old now. And uh, I don't know if Lordstown is gonna be using this exact thing, but this will just give you an idea Okay, first draft, okay, uh, review and release, okay, blah, 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 5, uh, 2018. So this goes through the Pro Drive project game, solving the needs of OEM. Okay, this just talks about, uh, they're calling the Alafi F1500 the Pro Drive, uh, offer a complete solution uh, for OEMs to use in their design of uh, upper segment cars vehicles. Uh, so, this is much like our advanced, uh, looks like uh, European Union, this is, looks like the advanced technology loan that the United States is supposed to offer that they'll probably stiff uh, Lordstown on. Sorry, you don't need it anyway. Anyway, uh, so this is uh, their proposal or uh, this is a summary of their systems that they've created so far. Uh, first draft, content, finalized documents so let's just go through this real quick and uh, this is a demonstration of manufacturer ability okay so this is just uh, as you can see this is almost a lab like setting but you can see here this is how they've set up the assembly line you know they got one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve people and this guy looks like a uh, 
He's there, so they got 12 people on the line there, operating machinery, and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 people, 16, 17 people there. Anyway, the point is, these are probably all going to be robots, or most of them. Um, and this is blah, 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 and scope of the document, uh, assembly line demonstrator. Okay, so this is just a demonstration of the assembly line. And this is the stator assembly line, and there's our... Uh, this is actually the rotor assembly, excuse me, rotor assembly station. Um, task assembly, the wire 3D formulation. Now, again, um, these are uh, people that could be in places at different times. And this is, again, just a, an idea. And again, I'm sure that... Uh, Okay, uh, this is the stator. Okay, this is one of the stator designs. I believe they've changed this spoke design here. Uh, but uh, insulation, insertion. So now this is a great picture here. It shows you the little fins here. And this is where the copper wires go in to uh, create the uh, stator. Uh, and then uh, these are machines that have been developed to bend and shape and insert these wires so this is probably something that is going to be installed in uh, Lordstown something similar to this um, these are the bus bars and uh, this is the assembly that's you know kind of glued in there or cast in there these are for the electrical and control connections for the stator very simplified construction. If you compare this to the Tesla, I mean, man, this is one tenth, less than one tenth of the parts. Anyway, that's it. That's basically it. That and there. There, that's the stator. Okay. Um, and again, this is a good view of what the stator looks like underneath everything. There's the coiled wires. It's a very good view, actually. I don't know if you, how well you can see that. Um, thermostick. Uh, let's see if we can take that up a little bit so you can get a better look at that. There we go. Look at that. Look how cool that is. And they're trying to use one complete wire or a limited number of wires in this to make it even more effective. And again, this is where the, uh, the control bus fits in and there's the connections for the control bus there. Very simple construction. Look at this. Look, look how elegant. It's elegant, I'm telling you. And this is an exploded view here. Shows some of the things that are needed. You know, not much, really. And um, these must be the hand operations that are required. You know, putting a couple screws in. So the, the main, the bulwark of this is done, you know, um, and here's the stators again, and there's the, uh, the bus. And then now, now here's the machines. Let's see if we can get this a little bigger. You can get a look. This is what they're waiting for from Malaysia or some version of this. And these are bending those wires and weaving, you know, weaving that, uh, weaving into those slots, the, uh, the stator one. So it's very cool. And uh, just to give you an idea of what this manufacturing, I mean, this is so much simpler than for any other electric motor manufacturer. I mean, guys, this is unbelievably simple. This is, uh, as I like to say, elegant. Anyway, if we go down further here, and again, uh, here is the uh, assembly. And this is, you know, kind of in a prototype stage here. But uh, look, they've got a few extra cooling hoses. This is... Uh, I think, uh, I don't believe the production version has this on it, but it, it might. But again, this will show you the assembly here. Um, what do they got? Lockite, uh, you know, putting it together. Look how simple this is. 
one, two, three. You know, they got some small screws, not great. Jenny Moreau wouldn't be happy with that. They got some O-rings. Uh, you know, this is a simple assembly, okay? And there it is there. And maybe we do have these cooling outlets on the present model. I'm not sure. But anyway, the point is, that's the stator. That's the whole, that's the whole thing. And, uh, stator mold. Okay, so they mold the exterior. This exterior is being molded. That's what this is a mold. Okay, these are these are evacuation holes, so they can mold a metal or epoxy or whatever it is they mold around the motor. So you got the machines, then they mold the uh, exterior on it, and boom, 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 boom. There you go. And then let's just go down a little bit here. Um, do the road of simplicity. The rotor line consists of only one workplace on which magnet gluing process is performed. <laughs> Cycle time for the lead to this keeping the automated magnet gluing machine is already developed. Okay. For another so they're gonna have an automated magnet gluing machine at Lordstown. High volume. Uh, the magnet gluing machine can simply be upgraded to the L fifteen hundred specifications. So they're gonna have the the magnet gluing machines at Lordstown, the latest configuration, and then they're going to have the stator wire bending uh, uh, ma machines as well. And I'm sure they're going to have robotics moving these parts around. Anyway, this, okay, for all you New Yorkers, this is out in a cornfield in the middle of Ohio. Useless eaters. Okay, uh, so this is this is very cool so this is it and it's got the the uh the motors uh, the magnets are glued inside and we've got a magnet gluing machine i guess this is one of the magnets here and this might be the placement of one of the magnets anyway fully automated magnet gluing machine on a different product line okay so this is what they're going to have at lordstown but it's going to be for their model of motor so that's also going to be automated so you can see how simple this is final assembly here it is fully automatic motor coupling machine patent pending uh pro drive blah 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 assembles the rotor so this is automated too so you know you got very few uh this is going to be you know the, the there aren't going to be, there are going to be a few small screws, looks like, put in by humans. There isn't going to be much else done here by humans. This is an automated machine that's going to assemble these two parts together. And there is uh, an example of that. Um, and what do we got here? Interface installation. Uh, on this workstation, interface and external components are installed. Okay, so you've got... Uh, these are the coolant lines going in, and this is the, this is the control lines and the power lines, and that's it. Well, they got some Lockite here and some Teflon tape. <laughs> okay, looks like one of my projects. Put a roll of duct tape in there, you got something, and a bigger hammer. Anyway, uh, RSL sensor installation, uh, whatever this may be, I'm not sure, but that looks like it might be done by humans. And here's the components, and here's what they look like, you know, with the lines all wrapped up, not being connected. That's your motor. That's the whole thing. That's it. Let's take that up a little bit so you can get a better look at that. There, there it is. That's it. That's it. That's it. So, uh, just to give you an idea of what the production line is going to look like. And our measuring station didn't come in through. And what is this? This is the end of line testing, fully automated. So you can see this is going to be a full, I mean, you talk about, this is going to be basically a fully, you talk about lowering production costs and simplifying, you know, a vehicle. 
I mean, you can't get much. I don't know how you can simplify unless you go to zero gravity uh, propulsion, which if Elon Musk is an alien hybrid, which I think he is, which he may be working on. This has got to be the simplest way to do it. And the, the margin on these trucks is going to be tremendous. Once they start cranking these things out and think about it, let's say you have a problem with one of your motors. You could send this thing UPS. Hold it on yourself for five minutes with hand tools. I mean, I know that's what Aptera is talking about doing. Let's just take that up a second. And there's the testing. There's the testing jig, fully automated. All right. So uh, just to give you an idea, this is what the manufacturing uh, could possibly look like. Uh, In-house, outsourced, uh, directly to appropriate workstation install the motor so this is the bus bar um that can uh, delivers the, the power uh to the um, to the motor and uh patents and automated see this is automated the, and 3 dd wire is automated by alafe this is going to be in-house it's going to be outsourced so these are all i mean they're this part this bill of materials is bomb for this motor it's like a half page long okay there's your brake sub assembly well what do you got hey you got the disc brake duh uh third structure along with the stator of the roper a uh, rotor uh connecting the bearing disc brake and caliber mounting plate to the parking brake so you got the parking brake this is the standard stuff here no big deal. Disc brake with a parking brake. Mounts. Uh, there's the motor mount right there. Uh, this hub uh, mounts on the stator, and the stator mounts on uh, the stator mount mounts on the wheel knuckle. Simple. And the rotor is attached to the wheel and goes around. And. Uh, base cables okay so you know this is standard electrical stuff here conclusion presented report several l 5100 motor demonstration product and highlights and let's see so you can read this if you pause it the main characteristic uh, highlights the processes performed on individual workstations. The main characteristics of the L100 motor assembly line is reflecting the flexibility for transferring from low to high volume production. Many of the fully automated machines already developed by Laffey's for Laffey's higher target volume products. They lay outside of the scope of ProDrive. This is kind of a prototype project. Easy, easily adjustable to the L. So this is, this is not prototype manufacturing machinery this is all proven and it's being adapted up to the l15 of uh, 1500 by simply replacing some of the machine modules uh, the office higher tiger volume products that lay outside the scope of prodrive products are easy adjustable to the l51 but simply by replacing some of the machine modules if the mo volumes of the l100 motor exceed expectations and will allow further investments into the line. Okay, so, I mean, that's the end of the report. But that'll give you an idea of a pretty well thought out and simplified and well automated production line uh, for these motors. And just, that's the assembly and the test the casting of the rotor and the gluing of the magnets and here they're casting around the stator and there's the stator again and again with these beautiful that looks beautiful then the windings and the, the minimal i mean you know the other beauty of this is here's the automated wire bending robots uh, again, the wire bending robots, uh, stator dressing sequence. So again, you know, this is 
take my birds off these castings, I guess. But anyway, the point is, this should give you a real good idea of what it takes to make one of these motors. And again, this is from 2018, and this was really a prototype, uh, kind of a production a proposal for this motor assembly line. But just trying to highlight the tech out in the middle of the cornfield. Everybody's underestimating this company. The, the president, Schmidt, I'll tell you what, he's the man. This is his baby. He's going to pull all this together. He already is. And uh, anyway, uh, I think it's going to be. Uh, see, this is. I think this. This is. This is the new new, guys. All the cars are going to be made like this. I mean, why would you make a motor any other way? Did you see Sandy Monroe's videos when he takes apart the the uh, Tesla motor? My God. Anyway. That's it, and uh, I don't think I'm going to put a close on this video. I just want to tell you thanks for watching, and uh, so we got funding. This line is coming through for Lordstown. It's on the boat from Malaysia, and again, you can see all these machines involved here. This is going to be pretty automated. They're going to put a few robots in here, just like the Steve Schmidt put that inspection robot on the dash line. This is going to be a high-quality vehicle lightweight torque power it's going to be nice it's going to be nice for fleets and it's going to be nice for consumers everybody's overlooking what a good consumer truck this is going to be you know if you want to drive uh you know a, a eight thousand pound you know massive cement truck around you know that's great i mean uh, you know the cyber truck is probably going to weigh that much the ford F-150 Lightning is going to be one of the heaviest. I think it's 9,000 pounds. That's okay. But if you're in a city, you're urban, you're you're an urban cowboy, you like your pickup truck, Los Angeles, or anywhere else, if you're not really doing uh, work that requires you hauling around tons of stuff, I think this is going to be the truck for you. This is going to be the consumer truck, the uh, Endurance. Uh, I think everybody's going to be shocked by it. Again, at 0 to 60, 3.2 seconds, 600 horsepower. They had it up to 130 miles an hour on the track. Torque vectoring, traction control, torque control. I mean, this is like an F1. Anyway, everybody, all right, thanks for watching. Hope you liked the video. Anyway, guys, I hope you liked uh, the video. I just want to say that um you know this infrastructure plan's coming up they're going to need pickup trucks used pickup trucks are selling it above their original sticker price ford has thousands of ice pickup trucks waiting on a racetrack in tennessee for chips to run them uh, they got i think eight plants shut down gm nobody can make a pickup truck right now the only people that are going to have pickup trucks available are going to be Lordstown in September, especially with this funding line that's come in. So, I'm not a financial advisor. This is not financial advice. I hope you liked the video. Uh, and please uh, follow the instructions on the next group. Thanks a lot.